So, hello viewers, uh, welcome back to the course on matrix computation and its application. So, in the today lecture, we are going to start with the, uh, the topic that is called the linear transformation. Because earlier also we have discussed the linear transformation or linear map in the case of a matrix of order m cross n. So, now we are going to start with the linear transformation from one vector space to the another vector space. So, we are going to start with the topic linear transformation or linear map or also sometime it is also called operator. So, in this case what we are going to do suppose we have one vector space u and I have another vector space v. We are assuming that they have are having the same field f because if f is real then it is real in both the case or if f is complex that is a complex. So, u and v both are the vector spaces having the same field. Now, from here suppose I define a transformation from u to v by t and this is the element I have taken suppose u then this is the image of u and that will be 2 t u. Okay, so, this is a you can say that a linear map a map not the linear I am just taking that t is a map from u to v then the by the definition. So, just write the def we write the definition here that suppose u and v are vector spaces either both are real or complex they should be same then the map from u to v is said to be a linear map or linear transformation if so t of I just take the two elements u 1 plus u 2 because it is a u is a sub uh, vector space. So, u 1 plus u 2 belongs to the u that will be equal to t of u 1 plus t of u 2 and this is true for all u 1 and u 2 belongs to u and t of alpha u that will be equal to alpha times t of u and this is true for all u belongs to u and alpha coming from the field f. So, if these two conditions are satisfied then we say that this map we are taking from u to v is a linear map or a linear transformation. So, that is the definition of the linear map. Now, if we take the t from u to u, u to u means it is coming uh, starting from the u and image is also lying in u then, then t is called a linear map on u. So, it is called the linear map on u. So, now so from here I can generalize these things. So, for example, suppose I take the vector space v 3 to v 3 by the transformation t. So, I am taking a transformation t from v 3 to v 
v2 by so i i will take the vectors from uh, v3 and v3 will contain the vector like x1 x2 x3 because it is coming from the belongs to v3 so i'm defining this one as suppose i define v2 so it should be from v2 so i define like this one because v2 will contain the all the elements which has two components so in this we are keep uh, taking the third component 0 okay so this is the transformation i have taken now we need to check whether t is a linear or not now let i take the uh, two vectors let x is equal to x1 x2 x3 and y is equal to y1 y2 y3 that belongs to the space v3 then t of x plus y can be written as t of so it will be x1 plus y1 x2 plus y2 and x3 plus y3 because these two vectors belongs to the v3 and that is a vector space so the this will belong to the vector space and this will be equal to x1 plus y1 x2 plus y2 and 0 so that is the image of this one now this image i can write as x1 x2 0 plus y1 y2 0 because just if i add this together in v3 so this become this now from here you can see that this is equal to t of x plus t of y so from here you can say that t x plus y in this case is equal to t x plus t y so the first condition is satisfied so from here this is i can say that this is the first condition the second condition will be t of alpha x so again it is can be written as t of alpha x i can write as t of alpha x1 alpha x2 alpha x3 so this one i can write as so now i will apply my transformation so this will be equal to alpha x1 alpha x2 and 0 now from here i can take the alpha common and i, I can write x1 x2 0 so this will be equal to alpha and this i can write as t of x so from here i can write that the t alpha x is equal to alpha t x and this is true for all alpha belongs to the field and for all x and x belongs to v3 so if the both the condition are satisfying then from there we can say that the t is a linear transformation and in the short form we call it lt the linear transformation similarly we can define the another example <coughs> for example i take t from v3 to v1 under the operation suppose i take x1 x2 x3 and i take x1 square x2 square x3 square 
So V1 means real number. So that is a real number basically. So this is the transformation I have taken. Now I want to check T is linear or not. And from here it is clearly I can see that if I take T x plus y as I have defined my x is equal to x1, x2, x3 and y is equal to y1, y2, y3 then I can write this as x1 plus y1, x2 plus y2 and x3 plus y3. Now from here this will be equal to if I, if I apply the transformation this should be equal to square plus x2 plus y2 whole square and x3 plus y3 whole square. Now definitely we know that this is not equal to x1 square y1 square plus x2 square y2 square plus x3 square y because it will be x1 square plus y1 square plus 2xy 2x1 y1 that will come. So from here you can say that t of x plus y is not equal to tx plus ty. So from here that t is not a linear transformation. So it is not a trans linear transformation. Similarly, so I can define the another example. Similarly, I can define the another example is as I take the transformation t from u to v as t of 0 or maybe I can just uh, first I define as t of u is mapping toward 0 of v. It means that suppose my u is there and this is my v. So I am taking all the elements in the u. So that is also going to this element, this is also going to this element, all is going to this element. So that is my basically 0 element in V because V is a vector space. So it will contain the, ident the additive identity that is 0 element. So I am putting all this element of U toward 0. So this is true for all U belongs to U. Now from here I can say that T suppose I take U1 plus U2. So this one can be written as because this is element belongs to U and which is mapped to the so it is equal to 0 V and this one I can write as a 0 V plus 0 V and this one I can write very easily that is T of U1 T of U2. This is true for all U1 and U2 belongs to you. So the first condition is satisfied and the second one is T of alpha U can be written as alpha of T U and that is alpha into 0 element and this is a scalar multiple so it will be 0. So both the condition are satisfying. So from here I can say that this is linear transformation. So T is a basically call it 0 map and linear transformation and a linear transformation LT. So it is called the 0 map and also it is a linear transformation. So this is the example number 1 I can say then from here I can take the another example that is we call it identity map. 
So, identity map I taking I u defined from u to u says that that I of u it applies on u it gives you the u and this is true for all u belongs to. So, now from here you can check that this is linear transformation because I of u u 1 plus u 2 be same as u 1 plus u 2 by the definition and this will be equal to I of u u 1 plus I of u u 2 and I of u alpha u is again it equal to alpha u and that can be written as I u. So, both the condition are satisfied. So, from here I can also say that this is also a linear transformation L t. So, this is another linear transformation we can define. Also, I, def I can define the another example. I take the transformation t from v t v 2 to v 2 by the transformation that t from x 1 x 2 that is equal to x 1 minus x 2. So, basically what we are doing here that suppose we have a two dimensional and some point is there this is x 1 x 2. Now, I take just the image of this one along x axis. So, this is basically x 1 axis and this is x 2 axis. I just take the image of this one here and this will be my x 1 minus x 2. So, I am just taking the reflection about the x 1 axis. So, this I am defining the transformation here. Now, I want to check that this is a linear transformation or not. So, now from here I just take x is equal to x 1 x 2 y is equal to y 1 y 2. So, both belongs to v 2. Now, t of x plus y is so I can add these two vectors. So, it will be x 1 component wise addition y 1 x 2 y 2 and this will be equal to x 1 plus y 1 minus x 2 plus y 2. So, this way we have defined and I can write from here x 1 minus x 2 plus y 1 minus so this one plus y 1 minus y 2 and I can write from here this will be equal to 2 t x plus t of y. So, the vector addition is satisfying also t of some alpha the scalar x. So, this can be written as so basically I am writing t of alpha x 1 and alpha x 2 and this one by the transformation it will be alpha x 1 minus alpha x 2 and I can take the alpha common. So, it will be x 1 minus x 2 and I can write that this is equal to x. So, it is a linear transformation. So, which implies that t is a linear transformation and this is basically this transformation here if you see. So, this is called the reflection so it is a reflection map about x 1 about x 1 axis or x axis you can take. So, this is a linear transformation we are defining. So, the after that we are going to define a very important linear transformation and that is called the 
So, let us we define a D that is a map D from C 1 to C A B. So, what we are going to do is that this is a space. So, C 1 I am defining C means continuous function and 1 means one derivative A B. So, it is a set of all which function whose derivative is also continuous. So, the function the set of all functions whose first derivative is also continuous. So, this is a set of all the functions defining from A to B whose set whose derivative is also continuous. For example, you take function f x is equal to maybe 3 x square plus 1. So, if I take the derivative that uh, then the function is again continuous and suppose I take a b the uh, the interval. So, in this interval that is true or I can define maybe sin x, I can define maybe log x, where x belongs to I can say from 1 to 2. So, this type of all the functions belong to this set and C a b is a set of continuous function. So, I am defining the a transformation d from C 1 space to C space and these are the in fact, these are vector space, but it is infinitely dimensional spaces infinitely dimension vector spaces. because we have done only the finite num finitely dimensional vector spaces, but these are the example of the infinite dimensional vector spaces. Okay. Now, what I do? So, I define the d over a function that is coming from here, suppose it is a function of x, then this is equal to d f by d x the derivative or I can call it f dash x. So, it is a transformation that is a different derivative transformation defining from this space to this space, this vector space to this vector space. Now, so I want to define what is the d of f 1 plus f 2. Suppose I take the two functions here that is equal to f 1 x plus f 2 x and that I know already that if I take the derivative of the function f 1 x plus f 2 x like two function addition of two function then from the theory of derivatives we know that this is equal to d f 1 x d x plus d f 2 x d x and this is again equal to I can write f 1 dash x plus f 2 dash x and this is equal to d of f 1 plus d of f 2. It means it is a linear uh, that addition is true. Also derivative of some alpha 1, some alpha is there. I just take alpha f x, where alpha is a scalar. So, it is just I am defining d by d x of some alpha f x and that we already know that this is equal to d of f over d x. So, it will be alpha d of f x.
So, from here I can say that D is a linear transformation. So, derivative is basically a linear transformation. So, this is the one of the example of linear transformation. Similarly, we can define So, I will define the another type of transformation i from set of continuous function from a to b to the set of real number and I am defining this as i of some function is coming from this set of continuous function defined from a to b. So, I take the integration from a to b of this function f x with respect to x. So, this is my transformation I have defined. Now, I want to check whether this transformation is linear or not. So, this one I want to check that whether it is linear transformation or not. So, for this one I choose two vectors. So, I of two vector I am taking f 1 plus f 2 belongs to the set of continuous functions and this is equal to i f 1 x plus f 2 x that we define and this by the transformation it becomes from a to b f 1 x f 2 x d x. Okay, so, <coughs> Now, from the theory of integration, I can write this as f 1 x d x from a to b f 2 x d x, because I know that the sum of two continuous function is a continuous function. So, addition is well defined and this is a vector space. And this we already know from the theory of integration that this is possible and this is equal to this is equal to i of f 1 x and this is equal to i of f 2 x. So, this is equal to this one it means that the addition vector addition is valid. So, this is the first property and the second property is i of some alpha f x. So, this I can define from a to b alpha f x d x and if I define this value then from here I can take my alpha common outside from this integral. So, it is from a to b f x d x and this I can write as alpha i of f x and from here you can see that first property satisfying this is satisfying. So, from here I can say that integration i is a linear transformation or linear map. So, it is a linear transformation the integration process. So, this is one of the very important examples we can define. Now, I will define the one more example that is translation suppose I define the map let suppose we have a map from u to v and let I take some u note that is not equal to 0 belongs to u. So, I define a map t from so let us let us say we define it from the same vector space. So, u to u now I define 
T of u is equal to u plus u naught. So, it is just the translation by the element u naught. If I take suppose I am taking T of maybe I take a vector suppose I take vector in V 2 like uh, 3 1 then it become 3 1 plus some u naught u naught I can take maybe 1 1. So, that will be 1 1. So, this type of things we can define. So, this is true we are defining this one then so, this is my transformation. Now, we need to check whether T is a linear transformation or not. Now, from here <coughs> Now, from here we can say what about T of u 1 plus u 2. So, by the definition it should be equal to u 1 plus u 2 plus u naught I am doing that transformation. And from here you know that this is not equal to u 1 plus u naught and u 2 plus u naught because it means this is not equal to it will be T of u 1 plus T of u 2. So, the addition is not defined. So, from here I can say that the T is not a linear transformation. Although it looks like the linear transformation because what we are doing just taking the translation by the element u naught. But if we check from here then we found that this is not the linear transformation. So, the translation by some element non-zero element is not a linear transformation. So, these things we uh, we can check from here ok. So, we will uh, stop here today. <coughs> so, in the today's lecture we have started with the generalization of the linear transformation and we have showed that derivative or, or the integration process or the identity map they all comes under the category of linear transformation. So, in the coming lectures we will continue with the more example or maybe we will define that how a linear transformation can be defined for a, from a one vector space to the another vector space. So, thanks for watching uh, thanks very much.